program is being brought to you on the Voice America Empowerment Channel. For more information about our network and to check out additional show hosts and topics of interest, please visit VoiceAmericaEmpowerment.com. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is the worldwide leader in live Internet talk radio. Visit VoiceAmerica.com. The views and ideas expressed on the following program are strictly those of the host or guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and ideas held by the Voice America Talk Radio Network, its staff, and management. Are you ready to live your best life, be stronger, and fall in love with yourself? It's possible and it's within you, but you need to unlock the power within. Welcome to Fearlessly Authentic with Jody Harrison Bauer. Jody is now living the best life ever, but it took some stepping out of her comfort zone. She's going to show you how it can be done. Here is your host, Jody Harrison Bauer. Hello, everybody. Happy Thursday. Welcome to Fearlessly Authentic. I am Jody Harrison Bauer and Welcome back, everybody who has been listening to the show. I am so thrilled that you are listening in from all over the world. And because you are listening from all over the world, I think the word TikTok will resonate with you. And, you know, you guys know I'm 59. So TikTok, TikTok to me always meant like, Time keeps on ticking, ticking, ticking. You know that Steve Miller song? And, but now it means something totally different. It is one of, or maybe the newest um, social media platform out there that is just killing it out there. Everybody is finding their place out there like they did with Facebook and Instagram and MySpace and all of those places, all of those places. And with me today is my fearless and very cool guest, very smart businesswoman, Kenya Kelly. Welcome to the show. Good. Hello, hello, hello. I'm so glad to be here. I was about to say good morning, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. It's 12 o'clock your time, 3 o'clock yes. here on the East Coast. And I wanted to let the listeners know a little bit about you, Kenya. And Kenya discovered, she knew about TikTok three months ago, but she threw herself in there. But I want to give you a little bit of background on her and how fearlessly authentic she is. So a little bit about Kenya. She is an accomplished business executive, teacher and inspirational speaker. She found her voice by writing and speaking about, and about understanding your God-given purpose and living, living to your fullest potential. She captures her audiences by conveying powerful lessons and overcoming fear self-doubt and divorce to creating successful six-figure business utilizing her gifts in corporate background. I think I messed that up a little bit, but it's all about, it's all about overcoming your fears and self-doubt to be the best version of you. Correct? Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you've gone through life experience of fear, self-doubt and divorce. So I all can't think as you know, that's just how it goes. Kenya is the CEO of, of If You Branded, a branding and consulting firm in Redding, California. She believes that branding is what people say about you when you are not around. So you need to tell them what to say. And I just love, 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 love that because it's so true. It's, it's, it is, you know, and, and the word branding has been around you know, just for a short period of time, it's the word everybody uses now, but it, it always gave a business their purpose. We maybe didn't know those words. So when I was growing up, we didn't know the word branding. We just knew what Coca-Cola was and we knew things like that. So Kenya, I am just thrilled to have you on the show. I, am, I want to um, first start talking about TikTok and how this came into your life. Yeah. So, you know, I think it was 2018. Uh, I'm one of Shalene Johnson's students in her uh, marketing academy. And she talked about it a little bit and I got into it and I didn't really know what was going on. Same thing happened in 2019 into 2020 and I had not posted anything or really got into the app. 
it wasn't until we were quarantined because of the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. I'm here in California and um, a lot of students come here for school and I decided to rent out my, my rooms in my house for students. Well, under the quarantine, when I'm working from home, they needed to be at home as well, which made it for a bad work environment. And so it was in that time that I felt like God invited me to go get an office space. And I was battling fear because, you know, you hear about coronavirus, you think everybody's going to die. And you're like, you're going to die. And so I was like, you know, I'm a very happy person, but I wasn't feeling very happy. And I felt like he told me to get on the TikTok. And I didn't quite understand it because I didn't know what TikTok, how to operate on the platform. But I felt like he was saying that I want you to go and you're going to get some happiness from the app. And then you're going to go and give joy on the app as well. Now, he didn't tell me what to do on it. He just told me that I was going to, what it was going to happen. And so I get onto the platform and I'm looking at it and I see, yeah, there's a lot of young people on the app, but I started seeing people in there, you know, in my age group. And I was like, well, what is going on? Like, I thought this was just a teenage thing. I thought it was this, this, and this. And I started to really enjoy it. Like, it became my entertainment. But the marketing side of me kicked in and said, wait a minute. If there are millions of people on this app, just like on Facebook and Instagram, then I've got to learn how to use this to my advantage. And so then I got into the app and started dancing because my background I've danced my whole life, not professionally, but just in general. And slowly but surely, people started falling in love with me, my personality, and my energy, and my numbers started skyrocketing. And I realized, wait, I'm onto something. Wow. Okay. So you took that big step. So it had been introduced to you previously, and you just said, mm, maybe not now, maybe not now. Because so yeah. many times, I think a lot of us, maybe women mostly, but I, I, I can't say that for sure, that we feel like we have to perfect something before we jump in there. Yeah. you know, Or maybe we stick a toe in there and we say, mm, nope, it's a little too cold. It's a little too hot. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And you might have a coach or a mentor that says, you can do this, you can do this, but you know what you have to, I feel that way with myself and I feel that way based on your story that you had to wrap your head around it or you had to feel that you had a calling and, and it had to be at the right moment and being scared of A, getting sick, um, B, looking for joy. All of these things, it sounds like came together. Okay, well, I can't really enjoy being joyful or bring joy to others if I'm in a state of fear. Mm -hmm. That's it, exactly. And I didn't know how to get out of it because every, every social media app that I was on was talking about coronavirus, coronavirus, coronavirus. Mm -hmm. And the only way of escape was, it really was TikTok. And, you know, I mean, I'm 39 years old, so I'm not like quote unquote old, but in the TikTok world, you're kind of considered ancient, you know? And so I felt like an old dog that needed to learn new tricks. But there was also this thing in me that was just like, well, I don't feel like God would tell me this just to entertain me. There's got to be something bigger on the other end of it. And I said, well, maybe I'm going to be on the cusp of something. Like I missed the boom with Facebook and I missed the boom with Instagram. I said, maybe this is my boom. And so at that moment, I was just like, I got to figure this out. I can't pretend like somebody's going to teach me this. If I'm going to learn it, I got to just learn it. And I, that's what I did. And don't you feel that whenever you embark upon anything new, whether it's opening up your own business, that you do have to become a student of what you do, whether it is TikTok or anything, if you want to be successful, my saying has always been effort equals success. So if you don't put in the effort to learn something, you know, it looks like we've talked about the, the younger generation that has been on TikTok. You're 39, I'm 59. My daughters are 27 and 31 and said, mom, no, 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 no. And then I told them that I met you. I go, guess what? I'm going to be on TikTok and I'm going to learn how to do it really well. So, um, and I realize now it's not just dancing also, which is very cool. So uh, explain to us what you do on TikTok. What was the first thing you did after you, after you put in the time and the effort of studying it and feeling comfortable taking that first step, what was that first step? 
Yeah, so actually my first video on TikTok was I went to Olive Garden and you know how at the end of the meal they give you those little candies, some little Andy's candies. Yes. And I love those. Candies. That's why <laughs> so I go Olive Garden. So <laughs> you know, like the salad and the candy. Yes. And so one of them had given me a lot of candy, but then I got to the hostess desk and was like, I bet they got more candy. And so I asked the hostess and he gave me a whole thing of candy. So I gave him this big old hug. Well, I left the store and said, oh, wait a minute, this could be a good TikTok. And so I go back into the store and I said, hey, Bryce, can I hug you for TikTok? And he said, sure. And so that was my first video. I ran up to him and hugged him and I posted it on the app. And all I did was make a blanket post. I didn't do any kind of transitions or anything. And within a day or so, it had 10,000 views. And I was like, wait a second. Oh, wait, I've I've to never st- I have to stop you here. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. What made you think of that moment, this should be a TikTok video? Because I walk my dog every day. I, you know, I've been thinking about TikTok for a couple of months. No, about a month so far now. And 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 I think about, you know, I'm five feet tall. I've got a 65 pound dog that pulls me all the time. And I thought, oh, this could be good on TikTok. But what made you go, oh, this, what, 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 what went off in your mind to think this should go on TikTok? Yeah, I think it was because I was on the app looking around. So okay. I was looking around well before the coronavirus hit and just watching the things that were going viral on TikTok. And, I, and I'm having this moment of like, this doesn't even make sense. Why would anybody watch that video 4 million times, you know? And basically TikTok at that time was like, we don't care. We just want to be entertained. And so post your entertaining content. And so I just felt like maybe this would be entertaining to them because I had been on it for like a couple months, just looking around. And that's, that's what clicked for me at Olive Garden. Do you think that was the point because you felt so comfortable and authentic that you said, this feels right. I'm going to do this because I think that's when we feel that that click, and we said this feels right. And is is that what felt like it to you when you when you posted it? I mean, you got a lot of views, but what went through your head? I yeah. So I think when I just hugging him in general and just knowing that he let me hug him yeah. was like that's pretty funny. And then I was just like, well, who else doesn't like? Everybody loves the candies at Olive Garden, and so that maybe that will resonate with people, you know. Uh, but definitely after I saw all the views, I was like, oh, okay. So they they like this. What else can I do that could be funny? or relatable. Um, And I knew that my life had relatable moments that everybody could, again, relate to. I just had never thought that they would be viral content worthy, you know, but it was in that moment when that hit 10,000 that I was like, okay, this could happen. Let's just move forward with this and see how it works. And you were having fun with it. Totally. I mean, just doing nothing. It wasn't an intention. I wasn't trying to make money or build my business on it initially. I was just trying to have fun and be entertained. Right. Right. Because we were in a scared, concerned state of mind. You obviously you hugged him before you were quarantined. So, right. right. So what was the next video? What did you Um, put out next? I think the next video was actually uh, one of the girls at my house is Filipino and she's uh, from Canada and she had been on the app and she was trying to figure out how the app work. And we're again, trying to be entertained. And so (laughs) she starts teaching me some of the transitions. And so we're in my room doing dress changes and I don't know what in the world is happening. And I'm watching us do these videos and we did them and they look great, but they're not taking off. But I'm fascinated by what she's, what she knows how to do on the app. So the more her and I made videos, even though they weren't performing well, I was just like amazed by what could be done just from this little app and not necessarily using some kind of editing software. So from there, when her and I stopped doing videos, I saw a video of a white woman and this white woman had gone to a black church for the very first time. Now, I don't believe in black or white churches, but you know how it goes. And so she went to this church and she just got her whole life at this church. She watched the way that black people shout, which is multiple different ways that black people will shout, praise God and all things. And she has this song playing. I don't know. I think it's like the Clark sisters, I think it was playing. And she is imitating all the ways that black people shout. And she is putting words to the shout. Like, here's the funky chicken. Here's the person <laughs> that passes out. The person that didn't want to come to church. The person that leaves early. And like, as she's doing it, I mean, the video is viral and I'm cracking up. 
And I remember that there's a feature on there that's called a duet where I could be side by side with her. I can watch her dance and I can do facial expressions. I could like put little tags and whatever. And so I decided I was gonna do it. And I didn't know what would happen with that video, but I posted that video and I woke up the next morning to 14,000 views, like less than 24 hours. Wow, wow. I didn't even know what a duet was. <laughs> so that is so cool. And again, and this is what I love is that you were just being yourself. And I think so many people... And being a branding expert, you know, I'm sure talking to other people that you, the most important thing is that they are themselves, yeah. that if they are not authentic, they're not going to sell their product. They're not going to sell their service because people are buying the authenticity of that. People can see it a mile away that you're not being true to yourself. So if you had not been giving those facial expressions, I haven't seen the video. I wish I have. I have to look at it afterwards. Uh, but if you had not been doing that, people wouldn't have resonated with it. Clearly, lots of people resonated with that. Oh, yeah. It was, it, the comments were wild. I was so surprised because it was like, I, I did the caption that said, my caption said how all Black people are looking at this video because, you know, we're, we're in a world where there's good things going on and then not so things going on race-wise. And I knew that saying how Black people look at this video would, could potentially be controversial. Mm -hmm. And I knew that it would grab people's attention. I just didn't know what would happen with it. And so as I'm making these expressions, looking at her like, what is she about to do? And I start <laughs> laughing and agreeing with what she's doing. People in the comment section are doing the exact same thing. Like, 99.9% .9 of the comments are all positive. And everybody's like, yes, like people are just like, oh my God, is that really what happens in a black church? I mean, you've got like mostly non-people of color are commenting going, oh my God, my black friend took me to a church one time. It was amazing. You have all these atheists like, I don't even like church. I don't even like God, but I want to go to church if that's what y'all do. That's and it's, it was just, uh, it, I mean, the, it's like millions of views on this video at this point. And it was, just one of my favorite videos because it was like, it was just fun. She wasn't making fun. She was just like, dude, this was what happened. And it was amazing, you know, and everybody agreed. So you get all of these followers. So you get all these followers. You're almost like it goes viral overnight, which of course, everybody who's on a social media platform, they, they pray that whatever they do goes viral. Okay. And yeah. most of the time you don't even know it, you know, um, I, I think I mentioned to you that I tried out for Sports Illustrated Swim last year, and the next day I was on the New York, uh, the, on the cover of the New York Post. And now I, I didn't, I wasn't doing anything except doing what I thought I was supposed to be doing because, like you, I had a calling, or my daughter was pushing me to do that. You know, somebody encouraged me to do it, and then the next day I, I see I'm on the cover of the New York Post. You don't know, and that's why you have to really, I think, and I want people who are listening to really listen to their heart, their gut, trust themselves so much. So maybe two years ago, when, when your mentor said to you, hey, you need to try out TikTok because it might be a good thing for you. You're like, hey, yeah, I'm not really ready for that right now. But then when you were ready, it blew up. And I think so many people have to just trust that timing that it's not about the perfection. It's about the progress. Yeah. Yeah. And also, you know, I think that I was, I was also being an old dog that didn't want to learn new tricks. Right. You know, uh, just as it pertains to TikTok. Now, sometimes it's just not the right timing for things. It's mm -hmm. just, sometimes it's just not, you know, just me in that moment. It was just like, here was this other thing that I didn't know what I was doing. I had nobody to ask the questions to. And so I didn't want to learn it. I didn't want to put in the effort of what it was going to take to learn that, you know, but anything that matters at some point, we begin to do it. Like for me, hearing God tell me to do something matters more than the app. And so I was like, he's got a reason he wants me to do it. So let me just do it. And now I'm like, thank God I listened. Right, right. Because you just listened. And I think so many people need to do that. And it's very, very hard because we are all so fearful of anything new. Even when I started this radio show and learning all the technical stuff and being so afraid, 
Uh, even when before we got on the air, you said, you know what, you should just um, shut down your computer and then restart. I'm like, no, I can't do that because then what if I don't find you again? And that would just scare me so much. And so, you know, that shows also the age difference, even though I, I feel, you know, ageless. I, I don't think, I think of myself as being in my 30s. So I don't think of myself as being 60 this year. But when it comes to technical stuff, that's when I see that there's a little bit of a difference. Yeah. So what's next for you with TikTok? Well, how many videos have you made? And if people want to check out your TikTok, we still have like, a, we have a lot of time to talk, but where, what kind of videos have you been making since? And what, besides the church one, what else is, was the most fun one? <laughs> yeah. So I have made hundreds of TikTok videos since then. I, over the last, three months, which is insane. That's crazy. Um, I do at least a six to eight videos a day on TikTok because that's what causes you to blow up like crazy on the app. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wait, um, stop, stop. So you have a business. <laughs> um, you yep. need to eat, you need to sleep, you need to go to the bathroom, you need to help mm -hmm. others in your business. So you carve out about how many hours a day to do this? I would say maybe two, if that, because okay. TikTok, the videos are like 15 seconds. You know, um, usually I get into my office around 7.30 in the morning. Um, but the night before, I've been scrolling on TikTok, just playing, screenshotting things that I want to imitate the next day. Um, and so when I get into the office, I usually will shoot maybe four or five videos in 15 seconds and just put them in what's called the TikTok drafts. And so that cost me five minutes okay. to do that. Um, now if I'm learning a new TikTok dance, that's different. Like when they are hard dances, I will learn them throughout the day. Cause I'm like, it's just, I don't have time to be like spending all my life trying to learn a dance or whatever, but the real fun stuff takes me 15 seconds. And then to do some captions may take me a minute. Right. So if I'm honest, I would say I, about an hour and a half a day on the TikTok platform, but the results are as if I do it 10 hours a day. That's crazy. I, you know, my daughters were both home for a while. And I think I mentioned this to you that they, they showed, we watched, we literally watched TikTok, uh, I don't know, five, 10 hours over the weekend. And I said, <laughs> wait a minute, you guys, I didn't know that people do videos with their dogs and they do videos making sandwiches and they make videos of, of everything. I said, I thought it was just dancing. I thought I had to be like this really cool dancer. Now I think I'm a pretty cool dancer. My, you know, I, 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 I've danced my whole life. So I think I'm a pretty cool dancer. I don't know if I, but looking at those dances, I, I, they're hard to learn, aren't they? Well, some of them, some of them are, some of them are really easy, you know, like, and then there are accounts that are dedicated 100% to tutorials. So people will just learn a dance and do a tutorial for it. And then other people will slow it down. So there's like, um, there's I, watched an, uh, one of, I watched one of those. It was See? really so slow. So they make it easier. Yeah. <laughs> but they really, really, really help. And so I, like the harder ones, I will watch the slow down tutorial. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm not looking. So if somebody wanted to get on this platform, what advice would you give them? Yeah. So if, if, okay, if someone is a business, I would encourage that before they start posting to get onto the app and start looking around, mm -hmm. you know, use what's called the discover page and search things in your business field. So if you're in fitness, type in fitness. If you're financing, type in finance. And that way you can kind of see what business people are doing on the app. Otherwise, if you're looking on your kid's phone, you're not going to get the real picture of what TikTok is because TikTok is going to talk to you based upon whose device it is. And so for me, if you look at my TikTok, you're going to see dancing, cats, soldiers coming home and stuff like that. Whereas on your TikTok, Jody, it may be showing fitness or hair or makeup or whatever the things that you like. So I say download the app yourself and then tell TikTok what you like. It's going to ask you what you like and then just first do that. Um, the next thing I would tell you to do is if you want to start working on the app, then just like we do in our businesses with all social medias and in general, be very specific about what your intentions are. So my intentions now are to build my branding and marketing business using TikTok. So when I'm producing content, I'm producing content with the intent of reaching all of my people 
in my target audience, not to play, but to make money. But I'm clear on that. So that's what I would say. So when you first started, it was learning, it was having fun. Now that you have followers that you now, you know, you can, you're going to transition it more. Your intention is more about leading with your business, still being entertaining and having fun. But now you know that uh, you can monetize this. Yeah, I think after I went viral with that first video with the lady at church, mm -hmm. I, I started monetizing that immediately. So mm -hmm. I am like, because like once I saw what was happening, I started searching the platform for businesses immediately afterwards. And I recognized, okay, I've got a window of time of people being quarantined. And so I transitioned immediately. And so the same thing I was doing three months ago, I'm doing now, I'm just doing way more videos um, of, that, of that particular content. Wow. So again, I think it goes back to what are your intentions and, mm -hmm. and being, being fearlessly authentic, not to use the title of my, my show, but to be, you know, be yourself and, and do it with courage and because people can see through that. And I guess it's okay to be a little nervous at first. You know, my first, I don't even know. If my, I know my daughters are listening. They better be listening. But, um, <laughs> But my very first video, I, you know, I always have my dog there as my safety net, like, okay, let's do a video, Ava. That's my dog's name. Let's do a video. And it was just some, something dumb. And then I took a video of her this morning of, uh, she was staring at a bunny. So I threw that out there. But yes, I've been looking more for like Rottweilers because she's a Rottweiler mix. So mm -hmm. Rottweilers, um, fitness. So I think that's great advice. Obviously, you, you know so much more than I do, but I'm, I'm learning from you. And just, you know, searching around, searching around, because I think it, it only behooves us as business women to know what's out there, how it could benefit, benefit us, how we can reach more people so we can help more people. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's, um, if we're having joy and fun with it, then we can teach other people to do the same. Yeah, exactly. It's like when we choose to do something that scares us, it unconsciously unlocks other people. Is that funny how that works? Yeah. Yeah. When I watch somebody else get on TikTok and do it, I'm like, okay, I can do this. Like people have watched me go through divorce and they're like, okay, I can, I can make it because Kenya made it. And like, I don't want to be anybody's guru for that, but I'm like, well, sometimes you are that for someone when you choose to do something that nobody has done or would want to do. It's so true. We, we want to pass on that courage to other people. And you being 39 and not being a youngster, but not being an oldster, me being older, um, you know, I don't know how many women my age are on there. It doesn't make a difference, but, but learning. So they say, oh, that woman's almost 60 and she's putting herself out there and she's doing something. Well, then I can. And that's what I think. I think we both have that same message of, of helping other people get past their fears. Yep, Exactly. And it's, it's the people that did it for us, and now we're doing it for somebody else. Isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah, I, I really, really love that. We are going to take a break, and when we come back, I want to talk about what else you do, how you stay focused, how you stay on top of everything you need to do for yourself, for other people, and how you teach them how to get past their fear. So everybody who's listening... Hang in there. We will see you after the break with Kenya Kelly, and uh, we'll be back in a few minutes. All right, all clear. That's great. That was really, really good. So I want to talk more about um, – sorry, I, like, messed up the, the intro a little bit. I never do that, but I just was probably just – should have had my glasses on. Um, <laughs> I think I got it together, though. It sounded fine, right? Yeah, it sounded fine. Okay. I wouldn't have known if you wouldn't have said it. Okay. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. Um, okay. So a few of the few, yeah, a few of the things, like I said, I wanted to touch upon was what do you do? How do you stay focused? Um, and here are all my questions for you. Here, they're all over here. So many questions for you. Are you having fun? Yes, I love this. It's so fun. I, mean, I don't. It's like. It's a whole new audience out there. And it's like, I don't know who they are, what they sound like, what they look like, but they're there. And it's just kind of, it's just kind of fun. So we have listeners from, let's see, obviously from the U.S., from Ireland, China, Canada, France, India, South Africa, and Sweden. Wow. I know. How long have you been doing? 
I've been on the show. I started on May 21st. Wow. That's amazing. So yeah, it's really, really exciting uh, to have all these listeners from all over. It means that, you know, just like your videos, that my message is hopefully hitting some people. 20 seconds. Okay. You know, because what we want to do is educate, empower, and inspire. Yeah, exactly. That's amazing. We're going to get a little. 10 seconds. Thank you. You're so easy to talk to. All right, here we go. You are listening to Fearlessly Authentic with Jody Harrison Bauer. We'd love to hear from you with any questions or comments you may have. Send an email to info at jodyharrisonbauer.com. That's info at jodyharrisonbauer.com. Now, back to Fearlessly Authentic. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. I'm with Kenya Kelly, and we've been talking about TikTok and getting over that fear of starting something new. But there is much more to this woman than TikTok, even though it is taking over her life right now. And I think you told me Netflix called you and Hollywood is calling you. Fill me in on that. Yeah. So I turned 39 on June 23rd. But right before that, a friend of mine was just like, you should do a dating campaign because everybody knows that I'm single. And I'm like, I'm not dating just anybody. But, you know, so just kind of out there just waiting to be found. And so she challenged me to do a seven day dating campaign on TikTok where I would just dance for seven days like normal. But in each video, I would talk about what I'm looking for, what I'm not looking for and all the things. Did that for seven days, and we had thousands and thousands of viewers and all that. Didn't meet anybody, which is fine. Well, two weeks later, I get an email from Netflix, and they're like, we're looking for someone just like you and your age demographics for our new dating series. And I was like, what? And I know, because I didn't post that anywhere else but on TikTok, Mm -hmm. and that Netflix found me there. That is crazy. Uh, That's just just crazy. You're just putting yourself out there. Yeah, exactly. Things happen organically. You didn't have Mm -hmm. to push it. You were just being yourself, but you were doing this challenge. I'm actually doing a sleep challenge right now, a 30 day sleep challenge. Not very exciting. Um, Exciting to me because I need eight hours of sleep and I want to try to get up at six o'clock in the morning. So um, we'll talk about doing TikTok sleep challenge or something like that. But I wanted to know how, when you're not TikToking and you're not helping people build their brands, um, one of the things that I heard you talk about was finding ways to love yourself. Mm -hmm. And you and I have both been divorced Mm -hmm. and that's a tough place, a tough time to go through. I had two children. I think you mentioned you do not have any children. And either way, it's a very tough time to to go through in our life. And a lot of it is we go through self-doubt, fear of maybe being alone, maybe a little self-loathing. And we have to come around into that place where we find self-love again. And you talk about loving yourself. And I wanted to know what you do to love yourself, because I think that's where everything starts. Yeah. So I know that I remember when I was going to divorce, one of the best things that I had going for myself was everything that I had done prior to meeting my ex-husband. I had read so many books, been to so many seminars and all that. So in the midst of all that, it was like, while I was battling depression and all like, what do I do? What do I stay or go? I could like hear all these people encouraging me like John Maxwell and all of them like saying all this stuff to me. Mm -hmm. And so it was like in those moments I had, I had choices to make of I'm going through this divorce. I could stay in this place, be bitter and angry, or I can choose this, this empowerment journey. And so my first thing was my, my relationship with God was like choosing him every single day and talking to him. I chose counseling. And then I chose to only surround myself with people that one, I could trust with my process, um, two, that knew me and loved me and that could that I could be selfish for a period of time. Because when you're going through any kind of tough time, the last thing you need is to be there for other people. You need somebody to be there for you. And so it was in those moments that I had to choose that. And so even now, it's been six years, I still have to choose that. You know, I relocated from Texas to California. And when you come into a new environment, if you know who you are, you're doing great things, people can want all this stuff from you. And so I, even now being here, have to go, okay, so here is my business. I'm gonna work from this time to this time. 
what makes me happy? What fulfills me while I figure out like dating and friendship and all that. And so I personally have to go, okay, I really enjoy getting my toes done. I really enjoy spending time with my cats. I love my cats. I like Netflix. I like the water. Um, I like in, you know, encouraging people. I like to go out to dinner or whatever. So it's me just going like, it's, it's not selfish to be selfish see, uh, for yourself, if that makes any kind of sense. You know, sometimes we feel like, oh, if I'm, if I'm caring for me too much, then I'm neglecting other people. But I'm reminded that you have nothing for other people if you haven't first given it to yourself. That's like a sponge. A sponge can only give out so much more water until it's bone dry. And I just realized early on that I'm not even willing to get bone dry to get refilled up. I, I will give you what I have through overflow. All the rest of it's for me. It's perfectly said. It's so perfectly said. And I understand that so much because I, I talk to my clients about the same thing. And I think there are not enough people out there who realize that if you don't give yourself enough love, you're going to be empty and you can't help to either take care of a sick parent or an elderly parent. You know, there's so many people in my generation who are taking care of their parents and you can't be there for your children. You can't be there for your cat, your dog, your business. And then what good are you? What good are you? So you have to, being, being selfish about loving yourself is not selfish. It's self-care. And people throw yeah. around that word self-care so much. It's about, you know, there are a lot of words being thrown around these days that kind of annoy me a little bit because they're meaningful, but when they get thrown around too often, they lose their meaning. And yeah. self-love is one of those words that, you know, hashtag self-love, hashtag, yeah, but are you really loving yourself? Are you really taking the yeah. time to get your toes done to read your favorite book? And, you know, for me, when I was married, I lost myself because I was taking care of everybody else and forgetting about me. And, you know, I took care of myself, but it wasn't in the right way. I, I worked out, but I knew that mentally, I wasn't taking care of myself. And my goal was to always, always be the best role model for my daughters. And how could I do yeah. that if I'm not portraying the strongest version of myself to them as a woman, right? Yeah, yep, exactly. You know, I remember during like, I mean, it's still kind of happening right now, but everything with like all the racial upheaval that's been going on in the country, I had this moment where I was just like, okay, how am I really doing? Like, I'm not doing good at all. You know, I'm like, and I was like, okay, so what do I need? And it's like, well, I need for, I need my own self-love in this moment. And so that means not being on social media as much, mm -hmm. um, reading things, I still post, but not like scrolling and all that. Um, going to my friend saying, hey, I know you've got questions about this, this, and this, but I can't be there for you right now because this is what I'm dealing with emotionally. And we're dealing with the coronavirus, the quarantine, and all that. I, I really don't have this to give for you right now. But I, if I hadn't looked at myself and said, what is going on? How am I feeling? Oh, I'm anxious. Oh, I'm in fear. Oh, I'm in panic. Then I couldn't, I couldn't figure all that out. And so telling my friends, hey, I don't have that for you. Or talking to some of my non-friends of color that will say things that they don't even know how that affects me when they say it and going to them saying, hey, so I love you. But when we talk about this topic, this is how you make me feel because I don't think you understand what we are dealing with, you know, it, as a race, but I love you. I would love for us to keep talking, but not about this because this is going to ruin our relationship. And I want you versus to be right. And I realized that that was self-love for me to say, hey, uh, here's what I need. I want you, but I don't want to talk about this with you because this is not this is not helping me and it's not helping us. And every time I do that with good friends of mine, they're like, they always come back and go, you know what? I realized that I was whatever, 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 and it lets them do what they need to do over there, but it keeps our relationship intact and keeps my heart intact. Yeah, it was a very tough time being quarantined and um, having that anxiety, that fear, concern. I was, I, you know, I, the first two weeks, I, I was like, yippee, two weeks, studio yeah. will be closed, woohoo, I'll have a little vacation. And then it, it turned into three months. And I felt myself like mid April being very empty, very, very mm -hmm. empty, and just kind of like laying low. 
And it's almost like my husband and I both understood each other and didn't, because we had that level of understanding. You know, mm -hmm. he was able to take care of himself, if you know what I mean, just self-love for himself, self-love for myself. And we did that. And my daughters too. And it's just so hard when you are so filled up that it is important to communicate correctly with respect to say, I can't, I just can't do this right now. And then come back later and say, you know, I'm good right now, or I can handle this conversation right now, but it, it's not always there. And I think that takes a lot of courage, um, a lot of self-love and knowing who you are and what you can handle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that that is, that comes from a person that really spends time with themselves. I think many people are afraid of being alone with themselves, of knowing like what they really feel, what they really think, what's really going on. And so people tend to make themselves so busy. I remember when I was going through divorce, people were like, well, just do be busy. Just do something, do busy work, do this and go shopping and do this and this. And I was like, well, that's actually not being as beneficial. Cause one of the, my scapegoats was I'll have my friends, kids over and just hang with them and we'll have pizza and all the things and I'll just stay busy and I'll be okay. And then when they would leave, I would feel depressed. And finally one day I said, okay, if I'm going to heal, I've got to sit into all these emotions. And as I sat in all the emotions, I look back six years and I'm like, look at me, look at where I am. And the women that I know that have gone through divorce that haven't sat with it, they're still bitter and angry and not healed because they haven't set in what's really going on. They try to escape by other things. They use other distractions. And I talk a lot about using um, distractions instead of, you know, be disciplined instead of using distractions. Because if we constantly use distractions, and I'm guilty of it myself, using distractions to take me to another place, another mindset, then we, then we can't be still with what's really going on with us. And that's so hard. It's so raw. Yeah. It's so honest. And it's, it, again, it's scary to be still and silent with your own sadness. <laughs> and, but we can't help, you know, we'll, we'll never get past that. And, you know, it sounds like you and I have both done a lot of work and I hope whoever is listening who may be going through a tough time, maybe it is a divorce, that it's not easy. We get it. Whether you mm -hmm. have children or not, it is a life-changing event that you need to face straight on and get your head screwed on right because you will be miserable with yourself in 10 years if you don't yep. get help. And so that takes me to where you said also that you mentioned getting getting help, mental health care. So we stay mentally uh, healthy. One of the things I was nervous about during quarantine was my clients and my members becoming depressed and other people that I loved getting depressed. And you know, for me, it was an outlet was always exercise, but I kept in touch with my therapist also. And a lot of people don't like to talk about that they go to a therapist, but I, I am the first person to recommend go talk to an expert. I can be, I can take you this far, but that is not where I am an expert. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I think that the world that has been created today has said that everything has to appear perfect. Your lawn should be manicured, your shutters should be this, your nails, your hair, your skin, always try your best to look young. Everything's got to be tan, everything's got to be every everything. And so to admit that you go to counseling is to say that quote unquote something is wrong, something is broken. Mm -hmm. Um but I think that that is this the biggest lie. You know, but it's a lie that majority of the world is believing. Uh, but the truth is, is that even when something is broken, I do recommend going to counseling. But when things are not broken, I recommend going to counseling. Oh, because they, I love that you just said that. I love it. I love it. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. But yes, 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 yes. Just don't go when things are bad. Yeah. I mean, because like, it's just stay healthy. You know what I mean? It's like, it's not always about that. My life is falling apart. My marriage is falling apart. It's like, no, you just staying engaged and talking with the person who is connected with you and your life. You know, I had a counselor um, I, over the phone for two years um, when I was in Texas. She was in California. Over, we would meet every two weeks over the phone. Mm -hmm. And when I moved to California, we would meet once a month in her office, but we weren't talking about depressed things anymore. 
we were talking about life progression, like transition and all the things. And it just gave me an unbiased person to talk to about everything. My best friend is always going to be biased. Um, and so people at church, they're always going to give me a quote unquote religious example, but to have someone who is an expert in all the things and knows you from the bad and the good, it just, it, and they, and they talk to you from a psychological perspective as well. I feel like it's just so, it's just beneficial for life because life is going to always happen. Like nobody expected Corona. Nobody expects whatever's going to happen next. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But why not always have that person that is completely unbiased to help you in all of life's things? Yeah, because when people, you know, with what I do for a living, I help people gain weight, lose weight, feel more energetic in their body, empower them through through the fact that they can do this. I educate, empower, and inspire them. And you do the same thing when you're working with companies, with brands. And one of the things, what they say to me is, well, how long do I have to do this? Well, what do you mean, how long do you have to do this? If you went to the dentist, I use this as an example, if you went to the dentist and you're flossing and you're brushing your teeth and the dentist says, wow, Kenya, your, your gums and your teeth look amazing, you wouldn't leave the dentist's office and say, cool, I don't have to brush my teeth or floss anymore. You would say, right. I'm going to keep doing this because it gave me great results. Why wouldn't I continue to go to the dentist to keep my teeth healthy? Right, exactly, exactly. It's just that that brushing our teeth seems to be like it's a it's a norm because otherwise our breath would think oh we have yellow teeth um, whereas <laughs> what we've seen on tv is counseling is when people are on the couch and they're crying their eyes out you don't typically hear people on television going because everything's fine and we unfortunately believe the lie of television of that oh it's like if, if me and my husband or me and my wife go to counseling because something's wrong like yeah, it's just it's just not it's just not communicated that it's a really healthy thing to do on a regular basis. Yeah, I I totally agree. If somebody is struggling right now, please go seek out an expert in your field. Mm -hmm. You can reach out to us too. We can take you only so far, but we both believe right. that you need a mental health expert, whether things are great or not great or they're fantastic, because you're you're always yeah. going to um, find some more headspace to grow hopefully if that person aligns with you well and you continue to work with that yeah. person. Um, so this is a funny thing that I heard about you. So oh, I don't even know where to start because it cracks me up. You said at one point when you were going through a tough time, you heard somebody tell you, your, your higher power tell you, can you go clean your room? Do you remember talking about that? Was it clean my room or clean my car? Both. I can't remember which one. Probably both. both of them. <laughs> and my room is always messy and my car is always messy. So I, I would love for you to expand upon that a little bit because that made me laugh and I could relate to it. I'm sure there are a lot of women who can relate to the messy car. Yes. So the, the car one was literally right. It was in the heat of everything. I wasn't, right. I didn't know if I should stay, if I should file for divorce or not. And I was crying in my office and I felt like I heard, which I believe in God. Um, I felt like he said, go clean out your car. And I was just like, I don't understand. I'm going through a tough time. Why am I going to clean my car? <laughs> and I felt like he said, go clean out your car. And when I cleaned out the car, I found a little bag of mustard seeds. Oh. And, you know, like in the Bible, it talks about that all you need is faith the size of a mustard seed. And I cried my eyes out and I taped a mustard seed to the rear view mirror of my car. Um, and I, for me, I felt like that God was saying that this is the end. This person is not going to do right by you. Mm -hmm. And you can stay, but I'm giving that you can go and then your life is going to be better. But I need you to have the faith the size of a mustard seed. And so, of course, I left. Once I left, everything went up. Like my income, I mean, everything just skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. uh, but the other part about cleaning my room was when I moved to California, mm -hmm. I was like, what is happening? Like mentally, I just felt all over the place. I felt depressed. I just felt like it was just crazy. And one day I felt like I heard God say again, clean your bedroom. And I looked around my bedroom and it was a hot mess express. And I was just like, but why are we doing this? And when I cleaned my bedroom, he said, the reason why you couldn't function is because your entire world was in chaos. Mm -hmm. 
And so in order for you to be in the right headspace, you've got to have a, a non-chaotic space. And it was in that moment where my room was clean, I could see and, and think clearer. And I was just like, who knew that having a chaotic lifestyle would cause an inner turmoil, but it did. They say that it does. And for me, like the, the space that I'm in right now, if it is not perfect for me, where I know where my water bottle is, where the clock is, all my notes, and nothing else around me, then I can think clearly. And the same thing with, I have a walk-in closet and it was so disorganized. And my oldest daughter is OCD about keeping everything very neat. And she would come to the house and say, oh, mom. Like, and it, it was, it was, it was overwhelming. And as soon as it was cleared out and I made that effort to clear it out with the help of somebody who is a professional organizer, because that's how much help I needed, you know, things made more sense or I didn't have to focus on that. I could focus on other things that I needed to focus on, but it's so true. You can't find anything or you find something little that says, oh, like the mustard seed. Oh, this is a sign. This is what it means. This is what it means from the Bible. It is a symbol. It is a symbol. And if we, if again, going back to what we were just talking about, that if you can, if you have that ability to sit still with your thoughts and get real and raw with yourself, then you know that this means something and you take it as a sign. And not everybody is like that. And we're not here to say, go ahead, be like us. But I think right. that if we go through life with an open heart and an open mind, we will see much more. Yeah. Oh, I agree. You know, uh, and whether somebody believes in a higher power or not, that like, it's like when a person just has a moment of just stillness, when we just can go, okay, turn off the computer, turn off this, turn off that. Let me just sit with my thoughts or journaling. You know, I remember one of the biggest parts for me healing from divorce was to journal and I didn't want to journal and I said well why don't I want to journal and I said oh when I write it down it makes it real yes. and if I don't write it down then this is not real it's not really happening but it was when I started to write out all my feelings all the anger and bitterness and resentment I felt towards him got poured out on the page and I, I days I would write 10 pages at a time and it was so therapeutic and it was just me and paper it wasn't anybody talking to me it was just me verbalizing the, the mean things I wanted to have happened to him, you know, just getting it all out and getting it out of my heart. It was when I was able to go, okay, I love me. I love this. I love that. This is that. Um, and just allowing myself to, or allowing yourself to just have this moment. You know what I mean? Like, especially right now with what we've gone on in a, as a country and what's still going on. If a person doesn't just take a moment, get away from the kids, get away from all the people, then we're just constantly dealing with all this stuff. At some point in time, a person can have a break, a breakdown. Um, but just five minutes a day could, could literally save a person's life. Journaling is key. I talk about it all the time. And I was going to ask you what you did for yourself and you answered that because the journaling is so, so key. Yeah. I feel like we are like, twin sisters. I, it's just, it's crazy how we just met and that we align on so many things and we've gone through so many of the same things. Um, being 20 years apart, who cares? So yeah. I wanted to ask you as somebody who has stepped over fear a lot and is, is really coming to terms with who she is and who she loves, what does fearlessly authentic mean to you? Um, I would say understanding that life is full of stuff. Life is full of things that like you're going to be, fear is, feels real and fear, you're going to have moments of fear all the time. But even though I feel fear in this, I'm still going to do it. Even though I feel like I won't meet anybody after getting divorced, I'm still going to, to go in that direction. Even though I feel fear of trying TikTok or trying to diet or trying to lose weight, I'm going to do it anyway, but I'm going to, I know that there's fear, but I also have this faith and courage in myself. But like that's what that is. That, that is a great, I might have to write that down. That is a <laughs> great response. It means something different to everybody. And, but I think that when we look at fear straight in the eye and we embrace it or we step over it, but we don't run away from it, we progress we learn more about ourselves because as you very well said, 
every, we are going to continue to face things that scare us, right? Yep. And that's every day. life. That's part of life. And we are in this thing called life. Mm-hmm. And no matter what, it's, it, it's here. It's here. As long as we are living here, we are going to face certain fears. So I am just so thrilled that I had this time to talk to you and for our listeners to be educated, empowered, and inspired for you, um, by you, for you. And, and please, if anybody wants to get in touch with you, what is the best way to reach out to you? Yeah, so all social medias, uh, you go to kiakelly.com and that will link you to all social medias, including Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Kenya, so, so much for taking the time to be with us today on Fearlessly Authentic. You are a rock star, and I look forward to talking to you and staying in touch with you. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We are clear. Great show, Jody. I will be right back. I'm going to pop back in on the other uh, board. Thank you. You're welcome. That was, I'm going to just stop the recording right now. <laughs>